Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Popper. Um, this is a format I previously have never played and I didn't really care about it. Uh, and then I recently came into a collection of mainly just Popper cards and I'm having a lot of fun playing the format. The decks are very inexpensive to make. I think the most expensive deck is like $25 that I currently own, the Delver build. And it's just a fun format. You, everyone has the has decks that they can compete with. In fact, it's under $25 and they're, they're very good. Everyone can play the same deck list. And that's why I like Popper more than Standard or Modern because those two formats, people cannot afford the cards that will be optimal in the deck. So maybe they choose not to play because they don't have their Snapcasters, they don't have their Tamagoyfs, they don't have their Lilies. Whatever $100 card insert here, they, did, they do not have. They feel like, oh, I can't play this format. I don't have my uh, misty rainforests, right? I have to substitute in for uh, polluted or flooded strands and that's not optimal. But in Popper, everyone has the optimal deck or everyone has availability to make the optimal deck. And so they can make a rogue deck. And I've, I mentioned this many times and it's a concept that I will mention, you know, continue. I will continue to mention this concept where you have uh, availability. Availability is more important in my mind than if you want to make that rogue deck go ahead but I want I would like you to have the availability to make that tier one deck as well and you're not making the rogue deck specifically because you cannot afford the cards in the tier one deck so Papa solves all of those problems um, it's you know sometimes MTG finance will speculate on like Abolette or some like random card and popper but for the most part uh, the cards are extremely inexpensive. The tier one decks are very easy to make. Um, again, it's a it's a um, format from just commons, and because there's just commons everywhere, it's relatively inex. I mean, it cannot be beyond a certain price point, uh, especially given that some of the commons are reprinted time and time again. It's a very powerful format, and it's an eternal format. So it's a way to play Magic without spending a lot of money. And I think that's what Popper has um, the most appeal uh, to the largest uh, majority of Magic players is because you can make a Popper deck for $25 and be tier one. I don't think any other format you can do that or come even close to that. You could make 10 Popper decks at $250, less than the price of a standard deck. And that's really incredible. And that's why I think I'm gonna support Popper from now on. I'm going to do more videos about it. I'm going to do deck text on it. And I, I love the format. It's definitely a format where, and also you can lend decks out. I always had this problem where um, if I don't have friends who play Legacy, then I'll bring an extra Legacy deck to lend it out. But at the same time, you're lending out a $1,200 deck. But for Popper, like, okay, whatever happens to the deck, I'll just make a new one. I mean, it sucks that you lost $25, but um, I feel more comfortable lending decks out to uh, strangers at the local game store uh, than I would with a Legacy or Modern deck and that's kind of fun It's when you can have people come in and they can all take a different deck And then when the night ends they can return the decks back to you and I've always wanted to do that um, for a format and I think Popper makes it a lot of sense because at worst you just lose $25 Anyway, bye guys